Able to On Air major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Also sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together, and Champlain Community Services of Vermont. Welcome to this edition of Able Dead On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. Arlene is off today. Thank you to our sponsors, Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, and um, Champlain Community Services. With me to discuss the importance of services for traumatic brain injury is Green Mountain Support Services and their brain injury um, clinic or department. Would you like to uh, introduce yourself? That sounds great. Thanks for inviting us. So I'm Barb Winters and I'm with the Brain Injury Association of Vermont. We're a statewide nonprofit organization um, that is started about 20 years ago mm -hmm. to work by a survivor to help individuals with brain injury to access community services and to educate themselves and to do support groups and all of that. Um, so being a nonprofit, we, we work, we often get confused with the state TBI program. Mm -hmm. We aren't part of state government at all, although we work with state government on a lot of different projects. Mm -hmm. We aren't part of it. Your name is Eric? Uh, Eric Page, and I'm with Green Mountain Support Services, mm -hmm. uh, the intake coordinator there. Uh, we're a, what's called a specialized service agency, so we're a provider for people who are working through the state Medicaid program. Okay, now, um, what is brain injury? Define it. Thank you. That'll be me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of the um, education person for the Brain Injury Association. What a lot of people, <coughs> when they think brain injury, say TBI. Mm -hmm. It's more than TBI. So acquired brain injury is the umbrella definition. And that is any brain injury that happens after birth that is not congenital or degenerative. Explain what you mean by those Thank two words. Thank you. I will. I'm sorry, it's just going to be a lot no. of questions. Yeah, no, that's good. So what I mean by congenital is things like um, uh, ALS, um, also known as Lou Gehrig's, Lou Gehrig's disease. disease. That is congenital. Great baseball player. Right, right. And then and a degenerative would be something like um, Alzheimer's disease mm -hmm. or any of the dementias, as well as things like MS. Epilepsy? Nope. Epilepsy is under the brain injury umbrella. <laughs> ah. The number one cause of epilepsy is brain injuries, to let you know. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that umbrella, mm -hmm. and that umbrella includes all brain injuries. A subset of that is traumatic brain injuries. Mm -hmm. When you say traumatic brain injury, it's... A hit in the head, a car is, accident. Yeah, external, an external insult to the brain. So whether it's the football player's heads, the motor vehicle accident, the fall, and the number one cause of brain injuries is falls. Um, I'm going to interject for a minute. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Stephen Hawking, there was yes. a movie based on him. Mm -hmm. uh, the Theory of Everything. Mm -hmm. He had, he fell, had injury to his head, the, I remember the story. He had traumatic brain injury, ended up in a wheelchair. You know, great brain, did a lot of things for science. Um, is it always, like if somebody gets hit to the head, uh, a sports injury, a boxer for example, they were trying to outrule boxing. Is it always a traumatic thing that happens to cause TBI, traumatic okay. brain injury? So for, so let's say, stay on Stephen Hawkins for a moment. I think that his fall was a part of another disease process, which is what he was suffering from, which ended up creating his disability, but he did have a brain injury falls are you can get brain injuries from mm -hmm. falls mm -hmm. now so with brain injuries that when you talk traumatic brain injuries there's three different levels mm -hmm. 
-hmm. according to the world, and that is mild, moderate, severe. Severe. So mild is where your concussions mm -hmm. fall in, and that's 75% of brain injuries mm -hmm. are that in that mild category. And then the moderate is, you know, like the TBI program um, that Eric works for only works with individuals who have moderate or severe brain injury because they, the mild, quote unquote, mild brain injury, that brain injury leaves you able to live independently, which they're With program. a little help. Or... It depends. So when you've seen one brain injury, mm. you've seen one brain injury. Mm. Every brain is unique. Mm -hmm. You and I could have the exact same accident mm -hmm. and injure It can the affect people in a different way. Totally differently. Yeah, okay. yeah. So <clears throat> how, how long have you guys been in existence through uh, Green Mountain Support Services or working with Green Mountain Support Services? Do you want to talk Green Mountain? Well, Green Mountain Support Services, I believe it's uh, over 20 years. They started as Sterling Area Services and mm -hmm. uh, became Green Mountain Support Services a few years ago. Um, and uh, the TBI program is one of uh, several programs that, that we have. And then we work with the Brain Injury Association of Vermont and the state program to try to bring everything together. You know, we all have different uh, things that we can offer, information, um, and uh, help. So, you know, our clients can contact the Brain Injury Association of Vermont so tell me a little bit, um, I see you brought up, uh, uh, not a cheat sheet type of thing, but... Um, <laughs> it is a cheat sheet. Can you tell me some of the services that you guys provide? Well, they're if different. You don't mind me yeah, they're, yeah, yep, they're yep, different. there you go. They're very different. So, so that's the Brain Injury Association. Right. So what we tend to provide is if someone has a severe brain injury and can't live on their home, we set up a shared living provider situation for them. Mm -hmm. So they would be living in someone's home and you're, um, you're having them be independent at the same time we're having receiving them be services. We're independent as they can be. Yeah. Um, and yeah. the shared living provider, their job is to uh, meet that person's needs. They get paid for that. Mm -hmm. It's actually a, a tax free stipend that they get. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's through the Medicaid program. Mm -hmm. Then for people with uh, less severe injuries, sometimes we provide a life skills aid. So someone who comes in and helps them with uh, maybe their finances, take some grocery shopping, whatever sort of things they need. Help them like if they have to pay rent or they have to write a check right, or right. something. Uh, uh, and that varies greatly from, from person to person. Mm -hmm. needs are. <laughs> Can people with brain injuries still, I know it might be difficult for them, but can they still have uh, jobs and work and that type of thing? or? How difficult would that be with a brain injury? Well, yeah, and that, it depends on the extent of the brain injury. And we actually have a supported employment program. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of our clients, uh, he can work, but he can't drive. So we have someone who drives into his job. Um, or, pro or possibly would give him a medical, a medical ride to a doctor's appointment. Right, right. right. Mm -hmm. Any service. It just each program is tailored to the. I I don't drive because they don't give anyone right. with. Uh, Epilepsy, because right. myself being having cerebral palsy, despite everything, um, you know, I'm independent. But they don't give, no DMV, as far as I know, gives a person with epilepsy a driver's license. Right. Right. It's not right. a safe thing. Right. Yeah, so I think that it's one of the things that the Brain Injury Association has is support groups. Mm -hmm. And I co facilitate one of the support groups. The Burlington area one and in our support group there are individuals who are working there are I mean it's such a hodgepodge but they really do and some people will tell you that they're better after their brain injuries because prior to their brain injuries they were going 24 7 non-stop they weren't really enjoying life and after their brain injury it forces them. So that's for some people, those people that look force on the bright them, side. You don't want to force anybody to no, do something. No, but it's, no, it's for, the brain injury forces them to slow down. Uh, Not people. The brain injury is saying, the brain is saying, oh, no, I'm done for the day. <laughs> if you can only work two hours, you only work two hours. Yeah, yeah. So for some people, it has been a blessing in disguise in a way. I mean, the, those are the people who take every 
negative thing and make it into a positive. But you can. Um, there's an individual who comes to the support group sometimes who had to totally change her career and in the process found something she really loved doing and now is actually happier. What do you mean by that? Well, she, she was a high level um, IT person, so worked on computers, solving problems, and she couldn't work on computers anymore. What she, in the exploration after her brain injury, what she came to was, I love plants. She became a herbalist, and she loves being an herbalist. She has a great life now. Mm -hmm. She, uh, gardener, that type of yeah, ah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now, in terms of brain injuries, uh, okay, so it slows the person's life down, but doesn't slow them, right? It, it doesn't slow. It, it depends on the situation. Uh, does your program now? Federal funds are sometimes being cut for certain things. Sorry to make you. <laughs> I know. Right. Sigh. I is know. it is your program control? Well, not control, but is it? Um, does Medicaid well, give we, money towards um, this type of program? We're, we're funded through Medicaid, so uh, the state we work. We're not part of the state, but the state distributes the money towards our organization. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Brain Injury Association is a private nonprofit. That's right. Uh, um, how is it knowing that? The administration that we're in now, as far as the president, yeah. um, he wants to cut this program, that program. Um, what is one thing that you can tell the administration to say, hey, we need this, because we need more programs like this. You guys are doing a fantastic job helping folks. So is it controlled? Um, you guys get funding through Washington, D.C.? Well, through Medicaid, yeah. The, the thing is, if you look at the state website, you'll find that since State of Vermont went to this shared living provider model, not just for TBI, but for uh, folks with developmental disabilities or older Americans who can't live on their own anymore, it actually saves the state a ton of money. So it's a very cost-effective program. How so? Um, well, you're, you're not running large institutions. You're, you're, you're putting people in individuals. You're giving them a better quality of life. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, they most recent report that they did found that people in the larger homes of six or so, uh, they're fine, but actually the smaller homes with one or two are more cost effective and the people have a better quality of life. So Can you explain about, since I have this uh, uh, <laughs> no, cheat, sheet, cheat sheet, <laughs> cheat sheet um, referrals and resources are ah. extremely important. Intake right. and referrals. How does that work with your agency? We both do it in, right. different, in different ways. So mm -hmm. let's say Somebody calls um, I staff our helpline, which is a toll-free number, and one of the things somebody will call and they'll go, "My brother is just had a brain injury. He's going to be um, coming back to Vermont from, let's say, Dartmouth. Um, and what are his options?" And at that point, it might be, I might call, gee, if, if he's from the area, whatever area he's from, I will try to find what are the resources in that area that they want to relocate, because I'm a big believer on getting close to your support system. So sending people out of state away from their families and their support system isn't a good quality of life for uh, anybody. What do you mean by that exactly? If the family can't visit, then the person can become very lonely. And, and also, there isn't anybody... Sometimes it's, it's really yeah. important for family to be around. Yeah, incredibly important. And also to be keeping an eye on the care. To be knowledgeable about what is working and not working, because they know that individual the best. Um, so that they can say, oh, he keeps throwing his beans at you because he's always hated beans. You know, maybe it's a not person who's nonverbal after their stroke. And the facility or the home is saying, oh, he's got a behavior problem. He's throwing beans at us. Mm -hmm. And the family can come in and say, well, he hates beans. I'm a huge advocate. Yeah. Right. Outreach and education is extremely important, especially 
Now, um, you know, because years ago when they used to have the um, situation where people with special needs were institutionalized yeah. and then taken out of institutions, how important is outreach, advocacy, and all of that within your organization? For the Brain Injury Association, it's probably the, the nut of what we do. So for the advocacy piece, um, we had staff that went down to Washington, D.C. to advocate with the state person and a survivor to advocate for more funding mm -hmm. for brain injury programs. And that's part of, you know, there's a lot of organizations that are in D.C. who are advocating for federal funding, mm -hmm. um, whether it's the National Brain Injury Association or it's the National Association of Head Injury Programs mm -hmm. around the country, mm -hmm. NASHA. There's, there's a lot of different organizations that are doing the D.C. stuff, and once a year, we'll join them and just enforce from all around the country, we'll arrive in D.C. and we'll go, hey, you've got to pay attention. And the survivors are there to tell their stories mm -hmm. because that's the most compelling way. So what we do, like on our website, if you go to the Brain Injury Association website, we have a person who does YouTubes, a volunteer who's doing YouTubes of survivors telling their stories. And it's really important. And actually one of our clients will be on that right. soon. Not one way that we're working together, though, is we're working with the state um, on a state le The state legislature, because it says, well, you're doing legislative ag advocacy too, right? Is that one right. and the same? Right. right. We, right. we, the Brain Injury Association does, and here's the thing, we can do stuff that the state government can't do. It's what because exactly state government mean? funding limits a lot of their, uh, they can't they can't testify like they can testify about budget in the state legislature, but we can testify about services mm -hmm. and what are what is needed. So so there's there's there really is, and they look to us for that to right. do things uh, that they a, can't do. Yeah, it's definitely a symbiotic <laughs> relationship. It is. Mm -hmm. but, um, Okay, so um, memory loss, I know I'm jumping around here, <laughs> um, head injuries and memory loss. Explain a little bit about that particular. So some people after their brain injury, usually there's a couple of types of memories. One is you lose the memory for a short time after the injury, maybe you're in a coma, whatever. So so you don't have that memory. Some people lose retrospective. There's rare, but there are cases where people lose all of their memories. I met one person who, after she was hit by a car, lost all of her previous memories, but that's rare. Mm -hmm. So memory, so the brain, <sighs> trying to describe how the brain works to kind of encode things, if you can't pay attention, which is oftentimes that part of the brain is damaged, if you can't pay attention, it can't get past. Uh, you know, it can't be encoded in the brain. Mm -hmm. So this this T-shirt actually says that um, this T-shirt was done by a survivor in my support group, and what it says is, can you read it? Mm -hmm. It really sucks to be living a life when you can't remember the life you're living. So that was a very high-functioning brain injury survivor who just has, she has to write everything down. And she, and it's tough for her to remember appointments and all of that. But she can do it with strategies. So she gets help remembering appointments and that type of thing. Well, she has strategies. She has, she what writes everything. What type of strategies? She uses a, a phone. A lot of people these days, the smartphones are your biggest yes. assistive <laughs> technology that you have. So people, and usually one alarm isn't, isn't enough. So I remember in one support group, an individual said, well, I said, I need to take my medication, right? Mm -hmm. So I set my alarm for my medication. It rings, and I think, oh yeah, I've got to get up and get my meds. And I, well, I have to get up and eat breakfast. Or yeah, and I forget. Mm -hmm. You know, I, the alarm rings, I remember it, I forget, and I'm still sitting there in my chair. And then he sets a second alarm five minutes later, 
and it rings. And I go, oh, that's right, I was supposed to get up and take my meds. And then he sits back in his chair and forgets it, because short, no short-term memory. Mm -hmm. And then the third alarm rings, and by that time he's so annoyed, he gets up and takes mm -hmm. his meds. So that's one individual strategy, just setting multiple alarms. There's so many different strategies for mm -hmm. memory. Um, in terms of, now what if you can't help someone with a particular brain injury, oh. what do you do then? Oh, so hard. That, and there are those cases. It's really... Have, we, have, you, have you run into those cases? Oh, on the helpline, yes. And there are people who fall between the cracks. They earn too much money to get Medicaid right. or services through state programs yet they don't earn enough money to li really live on. Maybe they've got SSDI, but maybe they've been rejected for SSDI. So what we first thing we try to do is to help them get what services they can. But in a lot of cases, it just isn't enough. Mm -hmm. They're losing their, they've used up their savings to, because they're, some people think that if they what do you mean by falling through the cracks? I'm sorry to. Tell yeah, you. that's okay. No, they, I've been there. So yeah. Like, what exactly? Yeah, falling through the cracks is that there is no services to help that individual at that time, and so as hard as it is, you have to say that. You have to say, "There really. Uh, let me try this. Let me try that. Let's get you in touch with this person," but. Deep down, you know, there's nothing. Example, um, I came from New York. New York turned around, we can't help you. You have a job, two college degrees, you're going for your third. We can't really help you. So I help people. You know, I'm not going to complain. Right. But there are those that fall through the cracks, like you said. Oh, there are. And that's the hardest. Those calls are the hardest to take. Mm -hmm. And I keep, <laughs> so that, that person I will try to keep like on my list of people to call back if I can figure out anything to help them. Mm -hmm. What exactly is your uh, community brain injury consultant program? Ah, thank you. So what that is, is we've gone through several federal grants. And every time we get a federal grant, we have to change those services that are provided under the grant can't be provided anymore. The Brain Injury Association of Vermont has three part-time people, including me. Mm -hmm. So we can't provide a lot of services without grant funds. So the last grant fund, when it ran out, the three-year grant ran out, it meant we couldn't provide a service that re was really needed. And that's where the Community Brain Injury Consultant came in, is what we can do, what we can afford to do at you know, through fundraising. And what that is, is that if an individual with a brain injury, if their team is willing to meet with me and the individual, I will not meet without the individual with a brain injury. That's just not my style. Mm -hmm. They have to, they're centered. There, there's a thing where they say, no meeting is with us without us. You got it. So. Nothing about us without us. Yeah. And that's really a core of And my confidentiality is extremely important yeah. when it comes to medical oh, stuff. Oh, it is. So let's say, um, uh, for example, a, a team called, a person on a team called and for an individual with a brain injury, and they said, you know, what can you tell us? And I said, well, if you want to meet and kind of brainstorm ideas for this individual, Let's let's meet, and so we did. We met with the psychologist, the um, oh case manager, the family, the individual with the brain injury, of course, mm -hmm. and um, this person was just just involved, so their parole person. So we met and we kind of brainstormed what kind of services <laughs> were out there for that individual. Beyond that, I can we can afford for me to go to one meeting. <laughs> And then beyond that, it has to be on the phone. Mm -hmm. And I'm more than willing to answer questions on the phone and to try to problem solve. Okay, so now, uh, what events, now I understand that you guys have several 
you're yeah. doing several <laughs> events. Yeah. yeah. What events are you guys doing to raise awareness? Who, uh, the walk and roll. Yeah, that's the yeah. Big one. Uh, that's the walk and roll is one of them. Yeah. yeah, and the nice thing about the walk and roll is that the walk and roll will walk through. It'll start at the city hall park in here, uh, not city hall park, the um, high school green. Let me see. Montpelier Walking, High School. Montpelier High School. Walk up Bailey Ave onto State Street. Mm. Take a group picture on the State House steps and then walk back and have an ice cream social. The banners, the signs, walking on the street will raise awareness. People in bright colored t-shirts, so we'll raise awareness there as well as individuals, you know, will talk with each other as they walk and walk and roll. It's called walk and so roll. So it's um, Saturday, May 18th. 2019. Yep. Um, this might air a little bit after that, but that's okay. Okay. Because we can get, we'll be getting, uh, I can go get footage of this event. Um, oh, good. Good. Um, so for more information on the, on the brain injury, um, is the Brain Injury Association uh, walk and roll, you can uh, register at give.classy.org uh, forward slash walk and roll 2019 Brain Injury Association of Vermont. That's great. And and you can still donate after the event. Right. Yes. So that's that's a key thing. And actually our organization will be having a team in the event. So yeah. Green Mountain Support Services will be there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, we have, uh, I think, a team of about half a dozen. We're about halfway to our fundraising goal. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, what are some of the other support groups that you guys are having as well as the, uh, uh, the community brain injury, uh, I mean the, uh, sorry, the, the annual brain injury conference ah. is, is also important. It is important. That is like the brain injury world all of Vermont all getting together in one place. And it's, there's sessions, and I put together the program with the help of a when wonderful committee. Thank you. That is Tuesday, October 8th at the Double Tree Conference Center in Burlington. Would like to be there. Good, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Put it we on your get calendar. Some, we can yeah. get some footage of that. That'd be wonderful. Um, now keep us busy. <laughs> yeah. The other, the other thing about that is that not only are there the sessions that people can learn from, but there's also the exhibitors, like GMSA right. yeah. will be a, yeah. an exhibitor there. And so you can go, individuals who are interested uh, in services can go and talk to the providers, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful thing. Yeah, because without advocacy, without, conf these conferences are important to get information. Without yeah. them, people, people would be kind of lost. I know. You know? I know. Um, so long and short of it. Um, Why, okay, so do you give referrals to people, like if, if you can't help somebody, do you send them to another agency that can? Oh, in fact, 90% of the time, we can't provide any services for them. So right. therefore, we're sending them. Right, to someone, because, <laughs> and, I, and in my case, if someone uh, doesn't qualify for services, I might send them to them right. saying, well, you don't qualify for our services, but they may know of a support group or some other, you know, at least we give them something. Just bouncing around. Get, get well, we work, oh, we, work, I we know. work together, though. Cause, uh, right now, um, there's a traumatic brain injury task group. Uh, advisory. Advisory board. group, right. That, mm -hmm. um, I'm on, and uh, we're working with the state and with the Brain Injury Association and kind of seeing what everybody's needs are. They recently did a survey where they... Uh, did a needs assessment from providers, survivors, and friends of family of survivors. There are some other organizations of Vermont, like Pride, uh, mm -hmm. TBI. Yes. Yes. What's the difference between that organization and you guys? Good. Okay, well, um, the uh, uh, Pride and Choice are actually both focus a lot on brain injury. Brain injury is one part of the organization I work through. We're, we're all specialized service agencies, uh, which means we can serve throughout the state. With the long-term Medicaid, you have to go first through a designated agency, mm. and that's based on where you live. 
What do you mean by designated agency? Uh, that's a state term, I guess, for like... A, so in yeah, other words, a specific it's, agency it's, what, what yeah. dealing... Saying, yeah, if you yeah. live in this zip code, you have to go through here. And then... Uh, okay. Um, is there anything... Um, what are the future goals of Greenmont Support Services with the brain injury well, and your agency? Sure. Yeah. Well, we're, we're actually uh, looking to expand the program because there is a growing need. Mm. And so How so? Uh, more and more people getting injured, and, and some of the data shows that once you have a brain injury, you're more likely to have another one. So someone who has a concussion in high school might be more at risk of having a, another brain injury down the road. Uh, and a lot of them go undiagnosed, and that's one of the things we're finding out through this task force, because it is not just organizations, but a group of survivors as well, that a lot of them were misdiagnosed initially, mm -hmm. and they weren't given proper right. uh, resources, and weren't told what to expect, and it's uh, mm -hmm. kind of snowballs. Right? Fu future goals of your... Well, one of the things, we have a lot of goals. We're, we're working on, with the correctional system, as part of a s federal grant that the state, the you Department mean, of Corrections... The, the Department of Prisons. Well, <coughs> actually... Correction, Department of Corrections is more than just prisons. Jail and prisons are all together mm -hmm. in Vermont. We're one of three states like that. Um, and then, so we're working with them as part of the state. The state got a federal grant. So people with brain injury are, we want to figure in prison? Out. Oh, undiagnosed, the brain, our jails are filled with people with brain injury, many of them that undiagnosed. That is something right? I did not know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's it's really fights, crime, and all that other stuff can cause or abuse as children, and huh. then they go on and no, they didn't don't get the kind of help they need, and they go on and they fall into that system of crime. Mm -hmm. So behaviors, you know. So that that's one piece. The other piece is concussions. We have a great concussion task force that. Um, We've put together a toolkit that is going to, the new version will be on our tool on our website soon, but we have an old version on our website. Now, here's a question that I'm going to just yep. throw out there. Uh, if you have a brain injury and in prison, yeah, do you get, do they give you medical, all the medical services more or more medical services that you might need due to Circumstances? How does that work? It's tough. They're they're grappling with that. The Department of Corrections is really trying I'm to sorry grapple to ask with that. You that question. We do, we th they're try they're trying. They really are trying. But currently, I would say that they most in most cases they are not getting services. So it goes by state by state, right? Oh yeah. So if you're in the Rikers Island, for example, in New York. One of the toughest prisons you might not get because there are people with special needs in prisons and right. wheelchairs and oh, yeah. so on and so forth. So, what's how do how do we as taxpayers how how do we go and say okay, we need to help these folks who really need it? How do you justify it? Justify it. One of the ways to justify it is the if you can decrease recidivism. So the people, the open door, get out of jail, go back in jail, get out of jail, go back in jail. Every time they go back, it's taxpayer dollars. So if we can, when they, one of the things that we're going to be working on with this is a three-year grant. So it's gonna take, it's, nothing's gonna happen fast. But one of the things is when they get out of either prison or jail, or you fall through the cracks due to your disability. Or, well, it, yeah, but that there's services there that get it that can help you so that you don't come, you know, there's some people who they feel safer in jail. It's sad but true. It's hard to imagine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, 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 I heard wow. an interview with somebody the other day on, on VPR that he was saying, I'm actually more comfortable in prison because I know the rules. So it, it, what we want to do is help them to integrate into the community better. Mm -hmm. That's one of the goals. So that's a goal. Yeah. Um, but falling through the cracks 
So how do we, like I said, you know, just uh, similar to the question I just asked, um, falling through the cracks is a difficult thing for a lot of people. So I know you're cringing and sighing. And, I know, I know. Um, and, and it's kind of sad, but are there more fundraisers planned to get more money for this stuff, or? Yeah. What we would like to do is, a lot of the work we're doing now is laying the grounds for developing the numbers so that we can, if we have the numbers, then we can go to the funders and say, listen, this is a problem. You know, here's our goals to work on this problem. And so therefore, so you have to lay the ground of first getting the data to be able to then go for the funding, whether it be federal, state, or private. And that's part of what we've been doing with this survey is finding out yeah. from people who've been through this, you know, what did you receive, not receive, what uh, help would have made a difference, are you aware of these services, these organizations? And we're finding a lot of it, particularly with the doctors, they're not trained in this necessarily. Um, so in terms of, for example, um, you know, another thing about falling through the cracks is, um, one of the questions I ask, usually of my, all my guests, is what are the misconceptions mm -hmm. around people with special needs when you first meet them? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> very good. Because a lot of times, if you say brain injury, people have this image in their head of something. Or you say development, it's, a, it's another thing. Um, I deal with cerebral palsy. There are different types yeah. of CP. Yeah. Right. So, get to know the person first. Right, right. right. And it's very You're, similar with, with brain injury. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, some people... Misconceptions. Of, uh, misconceptions. Like, oh, you have a, a brain... Uh, I'll give you an example. There was a, uh, a gentleman that I met a long time ago. His name is Bill Porter. Very famous story. It, there was a movie made, uh, Door to Door, there was a movie done about his, about, despite his cerebral palsy. The Watkins Company didn't want to give him a job at that time in the 1950s because, oh, you have a brain, you have a problem. We can't hire you. Why not? So they gave him the worst route that he was able to be a salesman mm -hmm. and then became salesman of the year, so on and so forth. We need to start yeah. realizing that despite challenges, people are N as normal as they can be and right. want to be independent. Of, and that's part of our primary mission is to find out what the person's goals and dreams are and help them achieve them uh, and help them live the best life they possibly can. But the flip side of that is the fact that individuals with quote-unquote mild brain injuries, which believe me, if you have a mild brain injury, it doesn't feel mild. Um, and is I struggle sometimes too, and right. I just deal with it. Right, but they they look. You're walking down the street. People aren't going to say, "Oh, that guy has a disability." They're just going to look at you and go, "Oh, that, there's a person." The individuals with those mild brain injuries walk and talk and look just fine. It's that invisible brain injury, or and invisible challenge like deafness. You got it. It's an invisible challenge, and the world doesn't give them a break lots of times to help them to. The woman that did that did these T-shirts is an incredible athlete. So she, you would not look at her and go, oh, she's got a brain injury. I need to give her a break. I need to make sure that she writes down what I say so she'll remember it. You wouldn't think that, but. Or make it, now, yeah. last question. Okay. All right because we're kind of running out of time. Uh, Americans with Disabilities Act. Yeah. Vitally important, and it's changing. Mm -hmm. On the job, for example, what are some of the accommodations that bosses are doing with people with traumatic brain injuries on the job? That's a good question. Uh, actually, our support... Oh, it's not a bad question. Well, no, it is. It's a great question, but our, our, our supported employment person actually would be a better person to answer that, because uh, I don't work directly with that but uh, do you have any thing with no nope. yeah there's 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 
like I said, we, we, we can provide, you know, transportation. Because some people do actually do need someone by their side while they're working. Right. A good job coach. Yeah, right. we can so, do that as well. But they may need, so let's say the individual is somewhat brain injury, one of the key things that happens when the signature th symptoms is fatigue. Mm -hmm. Your brain is working hard to work around the damaged areas, so you've got a lot of fatigue. Signature symptoms in terms of? In terms of the brain injury, just it's fatigue. So the individual may need to take a break. and Or an extra coffee break or you got it. walk around you the got block it. or something. Yeah, well, they may need to just lay down for 15 minutes just to kind of re-energize. So that's a piece of that an employer might be asked to do that as an accommodation. And that is one piece. Another piece might be a transportation. It might be that they need to have signs all over their workspace to remind them you're doing step one, step two, step three. There's a lot of different accommodations that you can do. And you might need an adaptive device if there's been yeah. nerve damage. Um, right. Yeah. Well, I would like to thank you for joining me on this thank edition you. of Abel Done On Air. Thanks for uh, the questions. We would like to uh, thank uh, our uh, chief sponsor, uh, Green Mountain Support Services, as well as Washington County Mental Health and uh, Champlain Community Services uh, for uh, sponsoring Able Dead On Air. This puts an end to this edition of Able Dead On Air. Arlene is off today, but thank you for joining me. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Ableton On Air major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disability to be home in the community. Also sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together, and Champlain Community Services of Vermont.